Okay, thank you guys, everybody, for joining us this evening. I was worried that I was going to overwhelm you with there's so much going on. It's sort of fun to, you know, I should, I should enjoy taking the time for one day and seeing what's photographing the garden. You know, it's one thing to go over over weeks, but it's sort of fun in one hour to go out and photograph everything that's looking good. It was sort of a nice challenge. Oh, well, it's kind of neat because you discover different things. I found out I have, I bought a Irinus um, alpinus and it's about that big and it's got this big old pink flower on it. It's so cute, but I would have never noticed it before because it's so tiny. Well, you can't so, tell with a close-up picture. You can just sort of make it look big, the close-up macro shot. I had to put my finger in there so you oh. <laughs> tell how big it is. It's a little alpine plant um, oh. as a... Uh, Pretty big flower for the size of a plant, but the plant's only smaller than the size of a penny. I mean, it's uh -huh. a crevice garden, so that's. Uh -huh. Ellen, years ago, you gave me some small red bulbs, and every year they would die back, and they're beautiful in a pot. This year, the leaves never disappeared. The leaves didn't die. The leaves that are there now are the leaves that were there last spring. Was huh. there anything unusual about last year that then? Because I probably had them three years, at least three years, they died and then they came back in the spring. But these never, the leaves never died. Huh, I don't know. That's, that's the um, what, oxbow lily, ox blood lily, right? They looked almost like your couch. And when you were giving them to me, they were on your couch and didn't show because it was a picture or something they didn't show. So they're, they're red and they're very small. And, I know what you're uh, talking about, yes. So I just wondered if there was something special. I didn't think there was anything different about our weather that this year that was that different from before. I don't know, maybe it got more water than normal, which naturally it probably didn't. But oh, that might be. Go ahead and start. I have a couple of announcements and stuff. So um, welcome again. I just want to let everybody know that if you guys have um, ordered seeds that Dave will be mailing them out by the end of the month. And again, I want to thank Dave for going to all that. Um, since COVID, he's been doing it all himself. So it's a huge undertaking. It's a great um, seed list this year. And then uh, thank you, Charlotte, myself, Ken, Saxon, Beryl, and Judy for contributing to the plant forum this uh, evening. And if you want to contribute next month, April 17th at 5 p.m., send them over. And you can send them any time throughout the uh, month, whatever's most uh, convenient, but by five at, on Sunday. So Charlotte, you are on first. Well, this uh, was kind of a surprise. Um, I just put aside a, an amaryllis I got a, a year ago Christmas um, in my garden room, which is adjacent to the garden, which you see behind the glass there. And um, just kind of ignored it. And all of a sudden it started growing and produced all these beautiful flowers. So um, it's all finished now, but um, I had a couple of weeks of some really nice flowers. It's gorgeous. It looks, it's, it's amazing how kind of you ignore things until when they bloom, then you go, oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. And you wish you'd treated it better, right? <clears throat> this, this looks very nice. Well, very I nice. guess I treated it right because it... it... Good point. Good point. Okay, so this is my um, teaser, which... Um, this is in the East Bay, and um, the person who is responsible, who is um, Phil Johnson, who is a former uh, uh, CalHort member and um, is retired. And as my friend, we went up there last night, and my, as my friend said, um, sometimes people do their best work of a lifetime after they retire, which I thought was a really nice uh, comment about uh, this project. But it's uh, <laughs> and it's just teeming with all sorts of wildflowers and so well appreciated. And it was covered with black mustard in 2020. And um, Phil had this proposal to the city in uh, where it's at and wanted to uh, do a restoration project. And so in, oh, not 2020, excuse me, uh, 2010. Anyway, so 2020, excuse me, he started this um, with black mustard, um, which is one of the big invasive type um, non-native mustards. And they've been working at it for 10 years and it's quite a big, huge hillside and they've been eradicating the um, 
exotics and planting seed and uh, plants, uh, perennials and perennials, and all sorts of native grasses. And um, it's just amazing. I hope everybody wants, will come out and see it. If you wanna uh, go, I can give you um, space where it's at. Evidently, the reason he wants to keep it somewhat secret and low key is because the neighborhood where it's at, there's like six parking spots for this space and the neighbors are starting to get um, not very um, accepting of this, of their neighborhood being overtaken by people coming to see the, this amazing space. So, but there is just, I mean, it's a whole hillside, hillside and you go, we approached it from one area and then you go around the hill and it just keeps on going and going. And then if you get to the top of the hill on the bottom here, the right is the uh, open space that is behind it. And so what's happened in my garden, um, I put this um, bulb in here on the left and I'm hoping Ken might be able to ID it. I'm afraid not. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's South African, but do you, is that a question mark? Yes, it is. Yeah. Remember what it is, or I don't know what it is. It was a surprise that it was actually throwing up a bloom because I thought they were all, uh, quite a few were South African, but I do have some weirdos. Other weirdos yeah. there. It looks like an amaryllid, but I'm not absolutely sure. It could be an onion of some kind. I do. I think I have, um, what is it? Shodii? Shorty eye? Um, is it Allium shorty eye? Or Shodii? Schuberti eye? That's it. Yeah. That's is that Allium? Yes. Ah, okay, that's probably what it is. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I shouldn't call them onions. Okay, I think that's what it is. Nothing wrong with calling it an onion. <laughs> Actually, uh, Diana Ross is on this talk, and uh, we went up to Oregon and came and went to nurseries on the way down, on the way back home, and we saw this um, alley of Schubertii, and it, they were all, had all their skeletons, and they looked like fireworks and stuff and so I had to get one of those so anyway that's from that trip and then there's some um monkey flower um, um, euphorbia lamii which is uh kind of a Dr. Seuss tree plant and it is um has just really neat structure in the uh garden and it's it's blooming and then to the right of that as you see there's the um well, it used to be Coreopsis uh, gigantea, but I think they changed the name on it and it has bright yellow daisies, but that's almost done now. And mine's probably about maybe three feet, but they can get up to 10 feet down in the, oh, Southern California in the, some of the canyons. Oh yeah, nice. And they're really cool because they're, you know, way up in the canyons and they're these big sticks with these big fluff of uh, green with yellow daisies. It's really kind of another Dr. Seuss plant actually. And then I showed the little um, little bit leucodendron, but now my bigger one is blooming and that's kind of out in front of my house there in a pot and it's being very showy in front of the street. It has at night or in the morning, you can see the light through with all the little petals, which is kind of fun. And then um, I think I have al aloe blue elf is there. And then the, um, the aloe humulus, which is in the little pot there, is this little tiny plant with these big, huge, or relatively huge flowers. And it's got like five flower buds coming up, which is kind of cool. Ellen, have you ever had a blue elf that doesn't bloom? I've only had one blue elf. So. <laughs> I want to know what you need to do to make them bloom, because I've had it in a, the hottest spot in my garden in a brick planter, and it never blooms. I have no idea. It's it's obviously in other, well, it's along here with other um succulents and stuff and it has a big leaf litter of oak leaves which that's not my <laughs> my doing but uh it has that but I don't know what the what the uh secret might be anybody else have any ideas maybe too hot where where you had it next to the brick. really there's such a thing as too hot for an aloe uh yes so where, where are you located I'm in Menlo Park, but it's on the south facing. And like I said, it's in a planter, a brick planter, about a, mm, 10 inches wide. Uh, how, how raised is the planter? Oh, it's about three feet high. Yeah, it, it could be. If that wall is facing south, it might be absorbing the heat and just cooking the roots. I don't know. Ah, all right. All right. Maybe I'll try something else then. Thanks. And then I have cardoon that comes up. I think those are coming up from seed. 
but it's just a really striking um, oh. architectural plant in the garden and it grows pretty quick. Um, and then it'll eventually get the um, artichoke type blooms, which is also quite showy. Evidently you can eat them. I've never eaten mine, but, and it's evidently the stalks that they, uh, that you eat. And then this little um, Moroccan daisy, which uh, I kind of ignore and then it blooms. And, it blooms. So, uh, and it stays fairly low, maybe eight inches. And then when it blooms, it's a little bit taller. These are pretty much full sun. Alan, those are the ones that are like little ornamental globes before they open? They make a little <laughs> I don't really notice the buds, so I'm not sure. Um, in what way bulbs? You're talking about the buds are like? Um, yeah, the buds before they open. I, I have one that looks so, sort of like that, stays low. Um, and the buds, it looks like, well, yours are <laughs> close to opening now, so. Has a real anyway, silvery foliage, like kind of fine textured. Uh huh. Okay, Ken has a bunch of um, Dudleyas that he's growing. Uh, yeah, I, I probably did. You weed weed out some of the photos? A few. <laughs> <laughs> the first one on the left there is Dudleya anthonii. It's from uh, kind of central Baja, California, on the Pacific, and uh, there it is again in flower. Or with the stalks rising, and then the flowers themselves. They're, they're red, kind of sparsely flowered, but they're interesting. And it produces a lot of farina. Annually, I, I trim off the dead leaves, and you can see what it does to my hand. Uh, the one on the left here is, I was out in eastern San Diego County, and I had never seen it before. It's Dudleya Arizonica. Oh, you got it in there. Did you add the comments? You did. A, a few, yeah. Oh, okay. So that's what that is. It was, this was last fall. So it was very desiccated. And then next to it, this is probably a hybrid in my front yard between uh, pulver relenta, which is a common uh, species here in Southern California. Does it grow up North? I, I'm not sure. In, in gardens, I'm not sure how far north it goes. And uh, Brutonii. This one doesn't look so bad in the summer. So that's why I think it's a hybrid. The pulver relenta just it dries up to nothing and it looks like it's dead all summer long. So I don't grow too many of those. What color flowers does it have? Because it says that the Bertone uh, has the, yellow and the Pervulenta has red stripes. This one will probably, it, this one has been kind of more yellowish. So I think Bertone, yeah, or cream colored. Yeah. And then the one in the upper left, that's uh, Pulverulenta in a neighbor's yard and its blooms down below it. And then I, I like the Leia Lanceolata. The top picture on the right was from Newport Bay uh, Preserve. And there were a lot of them and it was just beautiful. And there were both the uh, reddish or orangey form and the yellow forms. And what does the foliage look like of that one? Well, it's, it's um, hmm, kind of gray, uh, not too heavily coated with farina, a small rosette. The star-shaped leaves, I guess, are radiating out from this. I should have included a photo. The one below it is uh, the same species, but at Torrey Pines here in San Diego. Hmm. So there's there's quite variability in it. I was gonna say, obviously you like it because of the um, rainbow of uh, flower colors. It's kind of cool. It, it was, I was, I was, when I saw those at the uh, Newport Back Bay Preserve, I, I was just amazed. And uh, I posted it online. There was a lot of discussion, and most people thought it was Lanceolata. So, so that both of these are in, in the natural areas. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've I've grown it, but it hasn't done well in my yard. And then uh, pro probably my favorite in my yard is this Dudleya cespitosa. I originally bought it in a I think it was a four inch container and it had three maybe four little heads on it. And uh, this clump I've dug at least twice, maybe three times and divided it up. And uh, it always looks good, except for around the end of summer, August, September, it looks a little shriveled. I love the little purpley ones uh, when it's blooming there. That's kind of cool. Well, that's, yeah, each spring it, it goes through that phase where the, the, uh, a lot of the leaf tips turn, yeah, purple or red. And then the, the uh, stalks themselves show that red. It's, it's really showy. But the, the negative, as you can see in the photo on the right, is 
they tend to be kind of floppy. And then uh, upper left, that's um, Dudleya. I think I said viridescence, it's Visida. Um, and it's the same plant below it a couple years earlier. That is a San Diego County native, but I believe it also grows further north into LA County. And um, the one in the middle is Dudleya pacophytum. Uh, that one I've had for many years. It's in an area that's grown too shady and I moved some of them and I need to move the rest. Um, they're pretty old plants. They would do better in full sun. That's kind of a highly sought after species. That's the one on the bottom. Uh, that's also pachyphytum. Yes, that's also pachyphytum. In the shade? Okay. Right. Yeah, in the shade. Too, too shady. So. Probably lights up the shade though with those light foliage. It, it does. Those, those inflorescences should be um, straight up. Um, Ken, um, the previous photo, um, I, was that cespitosum? I don't remember. You're, um, yes. Oh, cespitosum. Do you, yes. you said it gets shriveled up at the end of the summer. Do you water? I do not water it, no. In oh, fact, oh, okay. this one probably would not tolerate much water. If, if you gave it too much water, it would probably rot. Okay. Does that mean it would rot up here in Northern California because we get a lot more rain than you do? Probably. I don't think so. Not in the winter. Uh, it does fine with all the water you can give it in the winter. Um, hmm. And in fact, the, the few wet years that we've had, we had close to your amount of rain. Uh, it just exploded into growth and, and turned into this monster, which needed to be divided. Hmm. It, I don't think we went through these yet. And uh, no, the, the one on the, the two on the left, are uh, Dudleya noma. It's a very petite, uh, each one of those heads is no bigger than your thumbnail or not much bigger than your thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And uh, edulis, Dudleya edulis on the bottom is a San Diego County native. It, it may grow up north, I'm not sure. It, it should do fine if you plant it in your garden. Uh, they're very- Can you eat it? Mm, well, with the name like edulis, you'd think so, I'm not sure. You don't know what part you eat, in other words. Uh, well, I would imagine it would be the leaves, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. So. You haven't tried it yet, huh? Okay. I have not, no. <laughs> I, I have enough gut problems as it is. So. <laughs> uh, upper right, that's uh, Farinosa, Dudleya Farinosa, which is, I believe is common up in the Bay Area, isn't it? I don't know. We need Bart on here. Where's Bart? Yeah. <laughs> I think, and there's there's different forms to it. If you go to, um, I've seen it at uh, Point in Monterey, Point uh, Lobos Preserve, mm. in beautiful colonies, and uh, it gets more red there. Th this one, it, it grows directly on the coast, and I'm a little bit away from the coast. So. Okay. Uh, the lower uh, lower right one is. <laughs> an acquisition I made at the San Diego native plant sale. And I didn't know what it was. And I searched around and finally found out that it was a, a Dudleya anomala from Baja, California. And locally it grows on the Coronado Islands, which are just offshore here, south of the border. Um, whereas I suppose along the coast, it's been decimated by development cattle or whatever. So. I noticed, Ken, all, the, all those pictures, you have a rather carefully uh, placed mulch rock underneath them? That's yeah, yeah I, <laughs> that's been a, a like a three-year project. Uh, I, I've been redoing, initially I used a lot of rock in the front garden, I just dumped it. And uh, over the last three years I've been doing this reverse um, theme with the smaller rocks at the bottom growing up to uh, larger rocks at the top with a few anomalous big rocks in between. At least that's the idea. Well, they look, A, I'm noticing I don't see a single weed. <laughs> and, oh, there's weeds. Well, I, not, <laughs> I try to keep on top of them. No, oh, but they could imagine getting in all those crevices between the rocks. So it looks, looks good. I was admiring how carefully 
each rock looks like it's placed individually. It's really well, they, yeah, they were. I sit on the sidewalk and the neighbors come by and they say, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I really like the way that looks also. Yep. Well, thanks. It looks like those uh, Jeffrey Beals um, rock sculptures oh. or rock, rock mosaics. Oh, not nearly as nice as his. I've seen his. <laughs> they're, they're beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I'm not that detailed. Has a similar effect, though. Yeah. Yeah. But what I am, is this the last of the grouping? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I get a lot of volunteers. They like these these kind of north facing mm -hmm. slopes. And of course, so many of the volunteers are probably hybrids. So I don't know what they are. So. Mm, okay. What do you do with the volunteers then? Uh, some I let grow, some I dig up and repot and give away to friends. Okay. Thank you. Ken, we will sure. see you a little later. Okay. For more. Now, Saxon, we got uh, Orange is the New Gorgeous. Oh, wow. oh. yeah. I, um, I'm so pleased that all my species tulips are looking good. That um, tulip, Waitali, Waitali, um it's the first year I've had it, and it was, I photographed that three days ago, and today it's, it's really wonderful. They have about, you know, eight, 12 or 14 of them all in bloom in a row. Um, so I'm going to get more of this one. It's it's really I've not grown it before, but boy, it's 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 really cool. Um, where where are you getting your species? Different places. Uh, Britain Becky's. I got some from Liberto in Greece. Um, um, I I think that's my only two main sources. Um, and you don't have gophers, I gather. I put them in cages. Uh -huh. they're, they're planted in cages, so I can't. You know, I I got. Um, I don't want to take a chance with gophers. I do have gophers, so so yes. I, um, and the Sparaxis, again, these were taken a few days ago. They're all, you know, well, they're closed now. It's getting late, but they're, it's really fun to see these really colorful ones um, in the garden. I just love, you know. Yeah. Anyway, it, it's fun. I love the design in the middle of that Sparaxis. It just almost looks like a butterfly sitting in there. Really nice. Yeah, it's a, well, Sparaxis are so easy. They, they, they spread, so they're, they're, but they're great. They're, they're, they're certainly adapted to our climate. I feel like they're certainly seen out know. like crazy. That's for sure. Yeah. But I love them, so. Yeah, no, they're so easy. <laughs> so, yeah. and this is a great color. My wife's favorite color is orange, so I, I definitely try to add orange colors in the garden. I thought gophers wouldn't eat species tulips, you know, the ones that come from Greece. I'd not taken a chance. So, oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, they're too, they're too precious. And so um, I'll see, I have a, um, a, a one part of my garden I call the bulb meadow and I'm interested to see what is going to spread or not um, over the years. I have I originally started as a daffodil meadow. I have, you know, hundreds of daffodils. And I've always had uh, lots of them, but I got a little bored with just daffodils. So I created the bulb meadow um, and we'll see what's, what's going to spread or not. I'm, um, say this Watalii is this picture really doesn't do it justice. Right now, it's it's, it's really beautiful in the garden because it's it's, it's a, you know they're all in bloom and it's, it's really a lovely one. Because of the massive color. Yeah, the mass, and they're all they're so the shape is just so beautifully mm -hmm. perfect. I mean, I just I, I, I debated taking the picture whether I wanted to look down into it. If you look down into it, there's, there's a black you know, spot in it, but it's it's more shapely. You, know, you look straight for an angle. Um, to look at it, where you see real the, the cup shape of a tulip. So that's, um, mm. that's why I got, I like shooting uh, plants at their level rather than shooting down on it. It's, it's mm -hmm. too, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, it's more respectful really to get down on the ground and shoot them at their level. Um, so on the other hand, think about what the tulip is trying to do. So it has these, well, the Witalii has the yellow and the orange, right? Mm-hmm. And it's trying to attack to attract an insect, but really it wants to attract the insect inside the cup, right? Well, that's and that's true. why it would have a special whatever it has to attract whatever insect it attracts normally. Yeah. No, I've, that's that's but true. Do the cups open up further, like in the middle of the day in the sun? Um, somewhat. These are the uh, these are. Fortunately, a few days ago when I took these, it was a little overcast, and so I got pretty good light to photograph them. Um, the Watalia is open somewhat more, but they're not, they don't, some tulips really open 
the display completely open, like Chrysantha. That they, they, the thing. Is this in the daffodil? Um, um, well, these are, this is not actually in my daffodil meadow. I've, I've, <laughs> I've got a large garden. <laughs> and so I've, I love uh, tazita uh, daffodils. Uh, I have, I think, every tazita that I can find. And I, my Cragford, um, it's, it, it, uh, I lost it a few years ago. So I reintroduced it into another part of the garden. It's just, just um, I, you know, I can't stop looking at them. I really like the, ta the Tazas, for all of you who do like daffodils, they're really well adapted to our climate. They really come back pretty easily. Um, the area in my garden where I it started to dissipate got too shady. And so um, I take it out. And this um, uh, other one is in a new part of my garden as well. I call it the summer dry garden. Just, um, but it's fragrant and a lot, not, um, a lot of the tazitas are fragrant already, and, mm -hmm. and, and jonquils in general are, are tend to be fragrant. Um, this is actually, the Doris is actually a hybrid. It's a hybrid between um, uh, jonquilla and one of the, I forget, but it's, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cross. Um, but it's, it's uh, I love that. <laughs> you know, uh, what, what do you define tazita? Tazita, it's one of the classes, I think it's class eight. Of, oh, okay. of daffodils, um, and there, there's Nate. I got one this year from um, from Liberto in Greece. He actually collected the Grecian um, tazetta, the species tazetta. So oh, I have cool. three. I got three of those bulbs, but they're not not going to flower this year apparently. Um, but the as, as a class, tazetta is. Um, I think in the catalogs there are about twelve or so that one can find eight, ten or twelve. Um, and they, you know, I like because they're fragrant, they're multi-flowered, and they just come back, you know, you let them go dry, and they, they'll come right back again next, every year. And Is then also, aren't they mostly the ones that bloom, like the paper whites? I have them starting in October, and, and because of all the different locations I have paper whites, they bloom through the end of February for me. You know, the paper whites are a different class. They, they bloom really early. They'll start blooming, like you say, in, in Halloween, um, Thanksgiving. Um, I don't think um, they're fragrant like the tazettas, but I don't think. Um, I thought they were tazettas also. I, I stand maybe corrected. Different, it's a different group because all all the tazettas that I have um, that are blooming now don't start coming okay. up. You know, there there are lots of them: uh, Falconet, Martinet, uh, Cragford. There are a lot that are they're all blooming now. And um, the Jonquilla, the paper whites are gone. They they've been gone right. for a month. So. Is that the class that is naturalized out at Point Reyes or parts of Point Reyes? I wouldn't be surprised, but I, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. I haven't. <laughs> On the, the ocean facing slope, I, there's a lot of them that, that have naturalized in the fields there. Yeah, I've seen them naturalized in some hikes I do around Marin um, that don't look like tazettas because tazettas are always <laughs> multi flowered, oh, yeah. you know, was, and so I don't know. Um, but many narcissists are, are adapted to our climate, so um, it's they, they they do spread a little bit around, and they're great because gophers don't like them; they're poisonous. Right. Yeah, so that's a big when, advantage. When you say um, that they adapt to their climate, um, what do you mean by that? In well, terms of climate, flower? well, they're climate adapted. You know, they they come from summer dry climates around the world, and so they they want to go dry in the summer. Um, and if, as long as you have wet winters, they'll replenish. And um, so they're just, they're, I, I like to say climate adapted. I don't like the term drought tolerant. I say a climate tolerant um, because they're from similar climates. So they just, they don't, they don't take much special care. It is spring. Yeah, and like I said, the Sylvestris, they, they open up really a lot. They're almost, they get splayed open in the middle of the day. Um, they're, these are spreading. So they're it's sort of nice to have them in the garden. Um, um, the, the baker eye, I've had that for 15 years in the same spot. It just keeps coming back. Um, um, and the, the crocus, I'm not sure if they'll come back. They, um, um, I, I, every few years I plant some more of these tricolor crocus cause I just, I love the color. Um, they're so, you know, amazing. <laughs> you see those colors. Um, and I'll see if they come back. I, over the, I've, every time I've tried them over the years, they, they tend to, you know, if I have a dozen this year, I'll get, you know, 10 the following year and six. And then, you know, it slowly seemed to, they're not quite as adapted as, as the daffodils um, or, or the species tulips. It's, um, species tulips, they, they keep coming back. So I'm um, not complaining.
Are the crocus from higher elevations where they get snow and stuff? Is that why you think? I, I just think because they, they, they come from dry climates, you know, a lot of the, you know, from the, the Middle East um, and, and uh, the Mediterranean, they, they, they want to go dry. Um, I think you can, if you, if they come too wet, I think they'll rot. I, I, I don't know what the, oh. secret is. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I say, um, um, some come back, some don't. Uh, my, my favorite tulip overall is, is, a, is a hybrid called Godashnik. I just love the color of it, but it never comes back um, after a couple of years. It just gets, it, the bulbs get smaller and smaller, I suppose. And so they don't really, you know, they're bred to be big showy things. Um, and they are when they're, when they're flowering, but um, the species ones are, are just so special. What's your soil like? Clay. <laughs> I amend it. Yeah, I, I've amended it over the years. I don't, the bulb meadow, I don't amend it with mulch, but when I created it, I had a lot of organic, um, uh, you know, com composted uh, soil on top of the clay. Um, but I, I think clay is great. I, I When I give lectures on my, my book, people say, oh, I've got clay soil. Well, that's, you know, that's a good thing because clay holds so much moisture. So if you have clay, uh, and it gets and it gets wet in the winter. I've been watering all day today. But, um, I I water in the winter if it's dry because I want the clay to get wet and hold it through the winter to the summer. I mean, so um, I think clay is great. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of plants are adapted to it, and our natives especially are adapted to it. Um, they do like some amendment. You know, do need to get some care, but um, um, you know, clay has cer certain advantages. Uh, I agree with you, Saxon. In fact. I took a class at DVC, a teacher claimed, and I kind of agree that, that clay is the most fertile of all the soils, as long as you add organics to it. And you just have to top the soil with the organics yeah. because there's a, a, an electrolytic process that goes on that allows the clay then to release the nutrients to the plants, which, um, and actually the places in, in the United States that produce the best vegetables in the world are California and New Jersey, and they both have clay soil. Well, I think I, I missed last month when I was showing my pictures of my camellias um, and saying how I planted them in clay soil, but with lots of, you know, I, I've mulched them regularly in a minute. So I don't give them a right. lot of summer water, but, they, but definitely, as you say, mulching and amending um, keeps the roots healthy um, and they can, make it through the right. dry summers. Um, I yeah. totally agree with you. Yeah. As to crocus, do all your crocuses want to be very, very dry? Um, uh, I, I just think of my own experience of having seen fields in France where it rains a lot and there's just millions and millions of crocus, you know, at, at the right time of year. Yeah, I'd say I don't, I love the crocuses, but they don't persist over years. I, I plant, I, you know, they, they, they slowly, Get smaller and smaller, um, so I don't really know. I'm not an expert on crocus. I, I, I'd like mm -hmm. to have more of them, but I, I don't. I can't. I don't know. I Perhaps it's they want just that they're not weather. seeding. Mm. So I wonder if they want colder weather than we have. Ah, uh, could be because I don't know. I mean, you're uh, on the really rare group, but it seems like all the major crocuses grow in Armenia and Turkey and. Iran, there's really not much, even even if they're coming out of Greece, they're higher elevation. And I remember New Jersey, they always did really well, but here I've never had luck with crocuses. That could be, yeah, that, that, that you know, I, I don't know. That, that's what I was thinking, that perhaps there's not a, a long enough cold period for them. Yeah. I had crocus sativus, the saffron crocus in Concord, and it, it it lasted, well, I planted it, it was there when I left 10 years later. Wow. Same number of them, or did, did it multiply? Did it they, they expand? It, 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 stayed, it stayed about the same. It didn't really multiply, but it didn't dwindle either. That one's from Turkey, correct? I forget. <laughs> But I think it yeah. extends through even into India because the Indians use a, a, a lot of uh, saffron. saffron in their yeah. cooking. Mm -hmm. so. A lot of it comes out of India, actually, if you buy saffron. Okay, these saffron. Next, yeah, well, these, the ladies? I see you got the uh, captions sideways, but the um, that the, the 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 primula, the yellow primula, is um, oh, 
it <laughs> is something that I was here 23 years ago when I moved in. Um, I have not done anything to it. Um, and it keeps coming back with no effort whatsoever. And I, I'd let, I've, I keep thinking I'm going to divide it because there's, there's two clumps of it, for, as you can see here. Um, but it's so effortless. It's, I, I, I didn't know primulas much about them, to tell you the truth. Um, and I assume this is just some garden variety, you know, uh, nursery center uh, primula that the previous owners, you know, planted um, and just keep coming back, you know, and it, it dries up in the summer and goes away. But um, it's really nice. So anyway, that, that primula, I, I, I probably like to plant more of them. And then that, that violet, I, I bought it at Annie's because she claimed it was the most fragrant of the violets and that Queen Charlotte. Um, and it is really wonderful. You can just, now that it's a couple years old um, and, it's, and growing and prospering, it's, you know, clearly you can um, just walk by it and smell it. It smells like my grandmother's, you know, uh, dust and powder she used to wear, the violet. Um, so that's, you know, it's, Annie's annual said it was the most fragrant one that she knew about and I, I'll testify to it. It looks great. You know, it's just, a, it's in a wetter part of my garden. So it's not a summer dry plant, but um, it's still, you know, it's in a, right next to, the, to our deck. So we get to smell it and see it. So it's, it's pretty special that way. And the, 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 the dogwood, I, I included this picture because it's not in flower, but this is why I have this plant because I love it when it first opens up um, and the, the leaves sort of come out almost like a, like a tulip. Um, and of course, it's variegated and it's, it has all sorts of great other attributes to it. But, but this week is really when it's, I just love it. It's, 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 it's gotten pretty big. As you can see it's in the background. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty large shrub now. Uh, but these little butterfly-like uh, leaves, when they first open up, are really just, just stunning. I, I really like it. Um, and then the, um, the, the camellia, I, I bought my camellias about 20 years ago from Sonoma Horticultural Nursery. I went out there to, to pick them when they were in flower. And I always wanted to have a pink perfection. Uh, I, I just love that, that camellia. And they didn't have any out there. And so this was as close as I could come to one that looked like it was pink perfection. And it's really, it's perfectly symmetrical. The color's a little bit off on this. You know, I took all these pictures with my iPhone, so it's not, not perfect, but it's really a beautiful um, uh, camellia. Just, just perfectly symmetrical. It's just so, you know, it's amazing that nature can do that um, with a flower. It's, just, it's really just perfect. Um, is it a softer pink or is it more vibrant or what's what's the difference in them? Or this, more... this, it's, a, it's definitely hot pink. This is a little bit, it, it, the colors are mushed up. Um, it has a little bit too much, too much magenta in it, the way I look at it. Um, mm -hmm. It's just not, it's a really clear pink. The way pink perfection, if you guys know that, that, that camellia is very famous. Um, it's a pure, pure pink. Um, this one's pure pink as well. I don't think it has quite as many petals as pink perfection, but it's, um, Anyway, it's, it's exquisite. Um, it's nice. And then my tree peony and the, um, are blooming now. They, they you know, that I, I'm so amazed. I don't give them very much water. Um, and they're so large. That must be 10 inches across, you know, at least 10 inches. That They're huge flowers. Um, and they cut well. They, we, you know, my wife likes them in the, in the house. They, they cut. They, they look just like this. This, this. this flower was about five days ago when I photographed it and we, I picked it that day and it looks just like this in the house right now. So it's, it's fixed really well. Um, and the Pieris, um, people plant this because the, um, when the, the leaves come out, they're really red, um, uh, not quite, you know, fire engine red, but a really dark mahogany red, but the flowers are lovely too. Um, and it's just lovely just as, you know, when they're in a good bloom year this year, a lot of shrubs, including our natives, they're, we got such good rain in December. I think it really saturated the soil. And so they were happy to um, put on a good show. So I um, just included this, you know, for my, my tour of the garden the other day of what was in flower. I just grabbed everything. <laughs> so included this as well. Nice. Yeah. Cassie has a question about the uh, Queen Charlotte. Is it as, is, is it as invasive as the regular um, violet? Oh, no, no. I have the regular violets that are invasive. Actually, in some places, I let them go because they, they're for easy ground cover to let, you know, have in the, in the, in the clay soil. But uh, Queen Charlotte is in a, um, a garden bed 
and it's only three years old, so it hasn't spread anywhere that I can see. As far as seeds, it's, it's, it's expanding, it's healthy, but it's not invasive. The, the invasive violet, I call it invasive as a, maybe a wrong word, uh, but it has really tough roots and runs by runners. Um, Queen Charlotte doesn't seem to be putting out any runners that I can tell. And are the tree peonies fragrant? No, no, not, not, not really. You, you can, you know, almost all, everything's fragrant if you put your nose right in it, I suppose. There's a, there's a, a green fragrance, but they're not, you know, they're not, they, they look, look like they should be, don't they? <laughs> but uh, they're huge. They're just so huge. Oh, <laughs> they're last but not least. Yeah, I had to, things that are flowering, you know, so I have a, in my front, my front yard, my uh, front, my lawn, when I moved here, I took it out and I seeded out uh, California fescue uh, and sort of let it go. Um, and of course, the, the dandelions come in and I um, can't, they're, <laughs> I'll, I'll weed whack this probably next weekend, but it's, it's, you know, <laughs> um, it's part of the look. <laughs> you can't get away from daffodil I and mean, from dandelions, I don't think. They just, they happen to be there. And I, I, I try to get a, a weeding fork in there you know, every year I'll spend an hour and pull out, you know, 20 or 30 of them. And then, <laughs> but there are always plenty more to come back. So. They're showing in their own way for sure. Oh, yeah. 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 So now we have, um, Beryl. Yeah. I don't know if you want to ask your, your neighbor, if she knows which uh, Clivia that is. She does um, a lot of high rising. And so, um, a lot of them aren't named or anything they might have numbers oh, there, but uh-huh okay and the photograph of the ribes um i probably should have waited a couple of days um it's looking prettier now with the leaves and the flowers developing thanks for more information ellen yeah i was getting kind of conflicting um information it says cal flora says it gets seven feet tall and four to five feet wide and then annie states it's more compact and bushier than other varieties but they suggest pruning it back by a third um immediately after flowering so i'm not sure if that's why it's more compact or what what's your experience i've only had it for i think maybe this is my third year i'm not i'm not sure and um i am planning to keep it i am planning to prune it because it's in a narrow space. So I don't want it to get very wide. How tall is it right now? Maybe five and a half, six feet. That's pretty quick in three years. Yeah. Actually, I, I can't really remember when I planted it, to be honest with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> it mentions that it has, um, I think it said it had blackberries, uh, followed by blackberries or something. Is, have you noticed? Oh, yeah, deep blueberries. Does it, um, are the um, currants particularly showy on them? You know, I'm sorry, I don't remember that. It's not a part that I don't, um, I don't really go, go over there very often. I will pay more attention this Take year. Notes. <laughs> but, don't turn um, it all the way back. Just leave one. You know, I, I, I think, you know, I, I cut one of the flowers off and a couple of days ago and it's looking still pretty good in water. So I'm planning to cut off some um, flowers with the leaves and use them as cut flowers because hmm. they, they seem to last pretty, pretty nicely. Oh, that's nice. I was wondering if the hummingbirds liked it. You know, I haven't seen the hummingbird um, go to it, maybe because I don't look there often enough. Um, but I, I do have at least one hummingbird on the other side of the fence um, who, I, who I see quite often, but I haven't noticed it over there. I have lots of ribes in my garden. They, they pop up all over the place. Um, they grow fast. Um, I don't never notice hummingbirds, um, but the the Ellen you asked about the berries. Their dark purple berries are fantastic in the fall, and the birds definitely like those guys. Um, 
and I'm, I'm lucky because they, they come up all over the place. I originally started with Claremont. I don't know what, you know, these are, it's lovely. They come up all over the place. So I, um, I'm lucky with that way. I love ripies. It's one of my favorites. Uh -huh. Since you have kind of a woodland type garden too. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Any questions for Beryl? Very nice. Thank you, Beryl. Judy Wong, you are on. Oh, uh, since we're talking about uh, geophytes, I thought I'd show this one. This is one I got from Annie's a number of years ago, and it's a homoglad a hybrid, a cross of um, gladiolus triste versus uh, homoglossum watsonium, which is now known as gladiolus watsonium. So uh, from the triste, it gets fragrance in the evening, and from the watsonia, it gets the coloration. So it's a perennial bulb, full sun, winter growth, deciduous in summer, um, drought tolerant, needs well-drained soil, and it blooms in early spring. Uh, the corms multiply pretty readily for me, and it's about two and a half feet tall, and the nice slender um, stems. It's really attractive. It's my, my front entrance walkway. Very nice. Yeah. So homograft is not correct. It's homoglad? Yes, homoglad. Okay. That's, so, that's uh, uh, what is it? Uh, auto uh, correction or what is it called? You know, oh, okay. spell check. Yes. It drives me crazy. <laughs> Correct so does it bloom sentence. during the same time as uh, Gladiolus tristis, or does it yes. bloom? Yes, okay. my tristis also in bloom in the back, so they do bloom at the same time. Are you sharing? <laughs> I haven't ever dug it up. It just sits there and grows, but I can. My Gladiolus tristis, I think of as short-lived bulbs. Really? Yes, and but they seed out like crazy, and I make sure that my gardener does not take the heads off. Hmm. And um, I, I was going to, I didn't get my act together. I have pictures of it right now. It's just massive because they hmm. spread out. The, the treest or the homoglades? The treest. Yeah. But I would love to have a hybrid because that probably exhibits tremendous hybrid vigor. Uh, it does because it's really in a tough spot in my front garden. I, was, I don't get too much seeding, but I get a lot of um, bulbs they reproduce. Mm -hmm. And you don't see them dying off. No, not at all. They get more vigorous, I would say. And I'm surprised considering how little rain we've had this year. Yeah. Beautiful color. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Nice. For this time of year to have that kind of color. I mean, Tristis is one thing, but this is, I covet it. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> funny because I actually like the trees much better. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, no, I, I do. Mean, I, I love the trees because of the fragrance. I go out mm. and pick them. And if you have them in the house, they, um, the, it just, the, the fragrance is everywhere at night. Mm. Maybe you guys could do a trade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All we'll, right. We'll need to get in touch, Judy. There you go, Kristen. So this is Homeria colina. And um, this is, I can't remember where I got this from, but it is a, uh, from South Africa. It's now called Morea colina. Mm, and it oh. comes in pale yellow or salmon and I have both but I find the yellow a little bit more robust mm -hmm. um, it is also a perennial bulb winter growing deciduous in summer flowers in spring to early summer it's a little bit early I think this year and um, it's happy as far north as British Columbia I understand and a hard freeze might kill it but um, I not had a problem with it and it kind of multiplies quite a bit so um i like it it's um i think i read one time that it was supposed to be invasive but i have never had it invasive in my garden oh it is in mine is yeah. it it, it yeah. reseeds freely in mine okay. yeah i don't think mine reseeds or maybe i you know i probably cut them cut off the seed heads before it really gets very far Good plan, yeah. Yeah, and the last one, I don't know if Mary Sue is still here, but this is a bulb that I got from uh, Mary Sue Itner, and um, she was sending out a, some extra bulbs that she had, and so this was one of them, and it bloomed this year, and when I asked her what it might be, she thought it was Allium hyalinum, hy 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 and she said that it's a native California bulb, perennial, <laughs> deciduous in the summer again with spring flowering comes in white or pale pink and those flowers I don't know it almost looks like there's nectar kind of close to the center and they really glisten in the sun it's 
it's very pretty, but it lies moist grasslands and it's supposed to grow in the central and southern Sierra foothills. She got the seeds originally from Nu Nien when he was over at UC uh, Berkeley. And uh, like I said, she shared some uh, miscellaneous bulbs and this is the one that came up and I like it a lot. It's very pretty. Thanks so much, Judy. Uh-huh. Okay. Share your um, spring happenings with uh, us on, um, for next month and Sunday, April 17th. Send them to uh, Ellen Frank at sbcglobal.net. Uh, or if you want to know where the wildflowers are that for earlier, just send me an email. Okay, good night. Good night.